Elsewhere, a mass hunger strike in Saudi jails. Dozens of political prisoners in Saudi Arabia are abstaining from food in protest at their detentions without charge. Activists say that more than 70 inmates have joined the protest action to also raise the alarm on inhumane prison conditions. They're hoping to capture international attention to what they call the gross violation of human rights in Saudi prisons. According to rights groups, some 30,000 people are being held in the Arab Kingdom's overcrowded prisons for political reasons. Many of them are being held without trial. Their families have held several public gatherings in major cities, including Riyadh, Mecca, Medina and Boreda. But so far, the protests have failed to bear any fruit. Well, to discuss that a bit further, we're now joined by Mr. George Labaki, who is a professor at Notre Dame University, who is joining us live now from the Lebanese capital, Beirut. Professor, thanks a lot for joining us now. How do you react to this news of the hunger strike in Saudi jails? Uh, will this finally get some attention to this large number of political prisoners in the kingdom? I believe that uh, the human rights situation in Saudi Arabia is really uh, very lousy and uh, very pitiful. And unfortunately, there has been a kind of conspiracy, silence conspiracy, to really uh, ban drawing enough attention to the human rights conditions in that country. So uh, I believe that this is the beginning of a long trend, of a long fight that will have really to continue uh, in order to assert people's right of self-expression and also to ban discrimination and finally uh, to, to respect private freedoms. Professor, can, can any of this happen though without the United States coming on side? Because obviously as we know the, the Saudis are allied with the, with the Americans. Well, definitely uh, again uh, this is the kind of uh, conspiracy made, made up of an interest. As you know, international law uh, or international relations are conditioned by two factors, law and interests. So uh, on the side of law, the UN Charter is very clear. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights is very clear. But unfortunately, facing that, we have uh, real interests. Uh, but uh, again, uh, everything uh, should have a start. And I strongly believe that what is called the Arab Spring or this uh, movement of change in the Middle East will uh, reach finally all the Middle East. And uh, when people see in the Middle East uh, uh, per se elections in Iran, people are free to express themselves, voting freely, I am sure that they will start uh, claiming to have such basic human rights. So then what do you foresee happening in Saudi Arabia then, Professor? Will it be a handover to the younger generation of the Saudi royals or do you see a complete change in the system? I think, uh, very frankly, uh, currently the policy of the current government has been to buy uh, people's support through uh, a welfare policy and also through a very strict interpretation of, uh, of religion. But uh, history shows that uh, uh, concerning buying people's support through a generous welfare policy cannot really keep people under uh, control. Uh, I give a very quick example about the French Revolution. The rise of the middle class in France in the 18th century as re uh, the bourgeoisie, in other words, has led to demands for more democracy. And this was a major reason for the French Revolution and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So I believe it's the beginning of a trend of change that might take uh, a long time, but, uh, but it's really the beginning already has started. All right, we'll have to leave it there for now, but we do appreciate your insight. That was Professor Labaki speaking to us live from Beirut.